you that have seen Harry Potter, it's basically just like Harry Potter. It's a rough sport, just like in the books. It's also a co-ed sport, just like in the books. The difference is, we're on the ground. We can't fly, sadly. Obviously, we can't fly. I think that was apparent. Uh, that's disappointing, but it's life. And it's completely ridiculous. The whole time you're playing it, you remember this thing is completely ridiculous, and but it's so much fun. I really enjoy playing it. I made a lot of really good friends. If I can keep playing through all my years at OSU, I will do it. <laughs> Quidditch fans from Harry Potter, but I had never, this is the first time we've actually seen the game played, played for real. real. Yeah, I love the sport. It's uh, it's fun to watch. It's, uh, I, I can see from the players it's fun to play. It's intense. Um, these guys are out here to have fun, but they're also out here to win, and they hold no punches. They have come out and just trying to show their best. Um, well, I don't completely understand the rules so far. Well, there's seven people to a team. Uh, three chasers, two beaters, a seeker, and a keeper. Uh, chasers, there are three of them on the pitch. They wear white headbands. Uh, they use a quaffle, which is a volleyball. The chasers are the ones that score the goals. The goals are 10 points each, and you can throw it from front or back. So as long as you get the ball through the hoop, then there's your 10 points. Um, a good chaser, you're able to watch out for the bludgers, you're able to watch out for the rest of your teammates. Um, you're able to make quick decisions about whether or not you can keep the ball or whether or not you have to pass it. So you have to be able to pass the ball, shoot the ball, run. You have to be able to take hits and give hits because you're also a primary defender. And a good chaser scores goals. There's a keeper, of course. Works like a keeper in any other sport. A uh, keeper wears a green headband is one of him. He also uses the quaffle. Um, and he tries to stop teams from scoring. A lot of teams use the keeper as like a fourth chaser because they're basically the same position except for the keeper gets special privileges in the keeper zone. Um, beaters wear black headbands, there are two of them, and they use bludgers to hit opponents. Uh, in the books, they're iron balls, but we thought iron balls would be a little bit hazardous, so we use dodgeballs. If you get hit by a bludger, you must dismount your broom immediately. If you have a ball, you have to drop it, and you have to run back to your own hoops, touch them, remount your broom, and run back. The, the beaters, they have an incredible allowance to take people out and, um, you know, get the quaffle away from the other team or get certain key players out of the, the game. Even if it is only for a couple seconds, it's enough to uh, disrupt their momentum. Good beater, uh, you got to keep bludger control. Uh, there's two beaters, there are three bludgers. So naturally, one team's going to have two bludgers, the other team's going to have one. The team that is controlling two bludgers is controlling the game. Uh, beaters have to work together to maintain these bludgers. Uh, they have to know who to throw at, who to hit. Um, I teach our beaters always, always quaffle first. I think most teams do that too. Um, I've seen a couple of different strategies out there. Um, there's teams that use both of their beaters defensively purely. There's teams that will send a beater on offense to clear a path for their chasers. Um, there's a lot of different ways to play the beater position, um, but ultimately it all comes down to bludger control and if you can hang on to your bludger or not. Seekers wear yellow headbands and they try to catch the snitch. The snitch is a person who dresses up in all yellow or gold or what have you and wears a tennis ball in a sock hanging out of the back of his shorts that the seekers try to grab. This catch is worth 30 points. And then when the snitch is caught, the game ends and whoever has the highest score wins. To be able to catch the snitch, you have to be pretty fast and you have to be pretty agile and outmaneuver them and get the ball that's, on, that's in a sock on their back. Uh, snitching is probably the most fun that you can be possibly had throughout this whole game period. Basically you get to run all over the campus and just avoid the two seekers trying to chase you down. And eventually, when they do find you, 
you are basically allowed to do anything you want to keep them from getting that sock that's hanging from the back of your shorts. The snitch is allowed to do anything that he or she deems morally okay to avoid capture. Really, there's no rules that apply to snitches other than don't break any federal laws. The snitch is somebody who's very athletic, and uh, he or she will not only be difficult to catch, but sometimes that can be a little rough. Pretty much the snitch has to bring the entertainment to the game. They do flips. I've seen people get in cars, ride bicycles, throw water balloons. One of my favorite snitch moves is picking up any kind of heavy-ish stick and wrapping the seeker's knuckles as they try to reach for the snitch sock. There's a lot of things that the snitch can do and the seeker pretty much just has to take it and focus on catching the snitch. If your school doesn't have a Quidditch team, it's fairly easy to start one. If you want to like check it out, just go to YouTube and type in like Muggle Quidditch and you'll find lots of great videos to teach you how to play. Look into it. It might seem a little weird at first, but uh, it's one of the most fun things you can ever do. It's worth looking into if it seems even mildly interesting to you.